I want to talk this morning out of the book of Philippians. Clearing the air. You know, a lot of times we find things closing in on our life. We find all the different things that um, have a way of distracting us. Sometimes it gets very difficult. I remember uh, a few years ago, the, the great fire that we had here in Prospect Heights down the road. Our church was a part of it. We housed many of the people here. But I remember being there early on, there was a few apartment buildings that caught on fire. There was a lot of smoke in the air. It was hard to see the flames at some times. Matter of fact, the, the fire went through the, the attics of these different uh, uh, apartment buildings. Uh, black smoke uh, covered the area. But you know, after a while, um, you began to see the true damage, and you began to see what was taking place. You know, a lot of times in our life, we need God to give us direction by clearing the air in our life. We mean by that. You know, in the book of, 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 of Philippians, Paul was uh, taking pride in this group of believers that he had an outreach to, a, a church that he helped start, and he wanted them to really uh, follow God and find God's way in their life. Judaizers came back after Paul left, and they began to infiltrate the ranks a little bit stir up some confusion. They began to share some things and people began to get drawn back. Paul was concerned that they wouldn't keep following the Lord. Paul was concerned that these people would, uh, the confusion would get to them where they would give up, get discouraged, or whatever the case may be. So Paul penned this letter in a prison cell, Philippians. Probably one of the greater epistles that people relied on over the centuries to encourage their faith to help them. The verses are going to be put up there. But what about you in your life? What's going on in your life where you need God to help you? It's confusing. What direction do you go? What steps do you take? Where do you go from here? What does your life look like? Sometimes things pull you in so many different ways, you really need God to speak to you or to help you in some way. Let's read the verses. These are very familiar verses with some of us. Many have drawn encouragement, but I want them to be a part of your life this morning. Not that I've already obtained all this, Paul's speaking, and he, he talks about his faith in the chapter before this. Or I've already been made perfect, but I press on to take hold of that for which Christ Jesus took hold of me. Brothers, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it. But one thing I do, forget what is behind and strain towards what is ahead. I press on towards the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. Sometimes we need clarity, don't we, in our life. Sometimes we need a good understanding. John David's been uh, looking at uh, different colleges to go to. We um, went down to Bradley. We um, went out to uh, uh, Washington, D.C., where his brother, Ben, uh, uh, lives. He got a good uh, uh, scholarships at a few of them. And, uh, you know, he, he, he thought about, well, going, going out there and we, we considered it. And then he went to another one down in Kankakee and a few others in the area to check out. I thought I should be doing this to my grandkids by now, not the, the second uh, 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 brood or whatever. I thought that maybe I was a little getting too old for this. I remember doing this with the first five. But, you know, after a while, we, we kind of settled in, or he did, on one would be a good choice. Then, to, for me, as a regular, I began to throw some things in the mix a little bit. 
because I really had a thought, a preference, but I didn't want him to really take what I said, so I began to muddy the waters a little bit again, which I have a way of doing sometimes. I began to talk about good about one of the universities that maybe he dropped on his lips list. I began to uh, cloud it a little bit. Why? But I was wanting him to test the waters and make sure, because this is a, a four-year decision possibly, or maybe even a lifelong where he would settle down or whatever it may be for him. So I intentionally began to create a little smoke and, and uh, uh, doubt or whatever it may be to test the waters, because I know this is uh, an important matter. What about you in your life? You have a job. Maybe you're pursuing something in your life. Maybe there's a certain direction you want to go to. And you've kind of thought that this is the course in life. This is the direction you ought to go. And then all of a sudden, some doubt began to surface. You had another path or another idea began to uh, uh, show its face. You began to look at something in another way. Oh, there's a new season, and now spring is here. You began to look at life a little differently. You thought you couldn't deal with the cold anymore. Now you're saying, Chicago's not so bad after all. Well, hopefully, that's, that's the case with you. And often, a lot of times, though, it's important for us to get a new scope on things, isn't it, friend? Isn't it important sometimes to, to reassess life? Or is it important to look at it in a different way? You know what? I kind of think that's what the, the Sabbath is about sometimes. God needing uh, us to reassess where we're at, to, to get a new scope on it, to, to get grounded all over again. So we can go back and we can fight life through again. And then we get another week under our belt. So we're talking this morning about a call to clarity. We're talking about uh, clearing the air, staying the course possibly. We're talking about you getting some convictions and settling some things all over again. Oh, this motherhood thing. I don't know if it's, if it's what it's cut out to be. I don't know if this job, I, I don't know if I want to keep doing it. And you're here this morning, this morning, wondering a little bit about where you're at. You're wondering about where you're going and the temperature and where you need to be. Maybe God wants to give you some clarity in your life today. Maybe God wants to kind of clear the air for you so you could have some understanding. After a while, after I uh, muddied the water a little bit for John David, we came back and, you know, we kind of came full circle a little bit, at least in our conversation. I don't know where he's at. Maybe at the end of this message, he'll have another great idea. But we kind of came full circle. We kind of settled back in our conversation about what we thought in the beginning a little bit or what we discovered. That's kind of what God wants to do for you today. To help bring some clarity in your life from time to time, that's a wise thing. So we're here today as a fellowship of believers, looking for God to help us to give us direction. <coughs> so I picked up, you might have to give me some water. I knew I shouldn't have had that coffee a little bit there. So I picked up five things <coughs> that we see in the scriptures. First it says here, you're, sorry about that, John David. You're going to have to hurry. Here we go. Thank you. See what happens with old age? <coughs> so here we go. Paul is addressing the church. And he says, not that I've already obtained all this. So the first thing that I see out of this is Paul had a recognition <coughs> of where he was at. Sometimes for you and I, we need to kind of understand about our life and where we're at. 
What do you mean by that? What Paul was doing here, he was kind of looking at his life and says, listen, man, I'm not perfect. I got some faults. There's some things in my life that I don't really like. So he kind of came to understand or, or share his deficit in life. Where was that? We're talking this morning about you getting clarity where you're at. You know, listen, friend, if you can have a good assessment of where you're at and get regrounded, maybe God can open a door for you or help you get to where you need to be. So here's the way I see this. First, Paul began to share with his, the people that he, he, he founded in faith, and he began to help them understand where they're at. First of all, he says, not that I've obtained all this. <coughs> Excuse me. Or have already been made perfect, but I press on to take hold of which Christ Jesus took hold of me. Paul had an understanding that he had flaws. Here's what I want to say, my brother, my sister. Everything in your life is not going to go right all the time. And it would be easy for you to get discouraged when things don't work out the way you thought. Paul says, listen, man, I'm not perfect and, and I lack. I haven't obtained everything. Here's what I want to say to you. Don't get discouraged if everything is not perfect in your life. Don't get discouraged if everything is not uh, there at all times. Maybe God understands that you're a work in progress. Maybe God knows where you're at, and he's not really worried about all the different things and the mistakes that you make. Number two. He says, but I press on to take hold of that which Christ Jesus took hold of me. You know, the second thing that I see, Paul made a decision. He says, listen, in spite of the problems that I have, I'm deciding that I'm not going to lay down and, and quibble about it. I'm not going to die. I, I'm going to press on. Here's what you got to do, my brother, my sister. In spite of all the different things that are coming against you, you got to make a decision that you're going to go forward. You know, it's like, getting up in the morning. But then again, uh, maybe that's difficult. Maybe I should use John David again. Or, or we got to... Uh, uh, how many times do we got to tell you get out of bed before you get out of bed? Five, six? You know, when I go in there, when his mother calls him five, three or four times, he just, it's like he ignores it. When I go in there, he jumps up pretty quick. Uh, but here's what I want to say. You know, Paul was trying to make the decision. He, he, he says here, but I press on to take hold of that for which Christ Jesus took hold of me. Listen, if you want to uh, let help, if God is going to clear the air for you, you got to make a decision. What do you mean by that? you got to decide that you're going to follow the Lord. you got to decide that no matter what, that you're a child of God. Sometimes... You can get farther by deciding some things uh, than uh, talking about it, than, than um, uh, 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 twinking around the edges. I had a pastor once tell me, sometimes you just got to make a decision. Even if it comes out as the wrong decision, sometimes it's best to decide, then God can direct you along the way. So Paul says, I press on to take hold of that for which Christ Jesus took hold of me. You got to decide that you are in this, that, that God is with you. You got to make a decision that no matter what, that you are going to serve the Lord. Number three. Number three. Yeah. Paul showed his uh, devotion. What do you mean by that? He says, brothers. You know, I like that. It's, it's maybe hard to see here, but you know, Paul was committed to the communion of saints. And we're talking this about having clarity. We're talking about clearing the air, staying the course. Here's what I want to say to you. Did you know that we need to be jealous of our brothers and sisters? They tell us, I remember hearing a survey about a Christian bookstore. They said Christian bookstores, now they're not too popular. They've gone out, rents are high, all that kind of thing. But they said 
that a Christian bookstore in a town, it would survive because the believers would undergird it and they would shop there. So the point was in the survey, like uh, 97% of believers would patronize that establishment as a way of showing loyalty. Now, here's what I want to say about what I read into this. And we're talking about clearing the air. We're talking about you getting clarity in your life. We're talking about you going into these summer months grounded. We're talking about you having focus. God has a plan for your life. God uh, has so many things that he wants to do in your life. But listen, but if you're pulled, if you're pulled too much, John David said to me, he says, listen, eventually we just got to decide this thing. I got to look for pick roommates, courses, and here's me trying to dust it up again. And he said, no, you know, we got to just quit talking about these others. We made a decision and we got to do it. Listen, in your life, eventually, you got to allow the air to be cleared if you are going to go forward and receive all that God has for you. One of the biggest tricks of the enemy is to keep things going, to, to not settle things. To, to keep the options in the air. Options are good, but options could ruin you. Options are good. I'm a person of options. I like options. I remember in Bible college, sometimes I had three jobs that I had to go to at one time. I was the midnight baker from 11 to 7. And sometimes I, I, I took three different jobs. It was hard to say no, and I had to be at three different locations at one time. Well, how many know that that's impossible? I found that that was a weakness in me, that I liked options. I, I didn't know what I wanted to do when I wanted to play the field a little bit. But that wasn't good for being grounded, stable. That wasn't good for uh, going forward and even others counting on me. Here's what I want to say to you. Clearing the air sometimes takes a decision. And we're, yeah, uh, Paul saying, brothers, I don't consider myself yet to take a hold of it. Paul was committed to, to this thing that was called the church, this, this brotherhood. Here's what I want to say to you. When we're talking about uh, staying the course, uh, be, be jealous of your brother and sister. We may have differences, but let me tell you, there's strength when it comes to being interconnected, being strong together. You cannot live life alone. You might think you can. Paul understood this, and, and that's why he, he, he starts off saying brothers. He could have he shared this another way. Paul's in his prison cell trying to give them understanding or help his flock uh, uh, in the relationship with the Lord and, and discipleship. And he now begins to turn it a little bit and says, brothers. I don't consider, and he goes on. But he addresses them because he knew that this was big. Here's what I want to say to you. Do you have a premium in your brothers and your sisters? What do you mean by that? You know, back in uh, uh, the days of old, your brothers and sisters, they were big to you. Do you, do you count that as an asset? Are, are your brothers and sisters in Christ an asset to you? Do you consider what uh, the church as an asset or is it something you could take or leave it? Here's what I want to say. As we're talking about a call to clarity in your life, as we're looking at and trying to get rid of the, the excess and really deal with the things that matter, as we know in order to advance that some things uh, uh, are more important than the other. So he says, brothers, I don't consider myself the fourth thing, but one thing I do, forgetting what is behind. In clearing the air, in having a call to clarity, sometimes we got to do what Paul says, and he says, but one thing I do. I don't think this is by mistake also. Matter of fact, you could probably dissect every word in this and come up with some stuff to help you and I in our life. But I'm just picking out five points to ponder this morning to help you and I. Sometimes, once again, if we can get some principles, principles uh, uh, rule the day. As a matter of fact, principles are the things ultimately that needs to guide our ship. So he says, he says, but one thing. Now, what does that mean? 
Paul was understanding that he can't be a person of uh, uh, multiple visions. He says, but one thing I do. Here's what I want to say. Sometimes you've got to decide what your life is about. It's all right to have four or five irons in the fire, but eventually you've got to say, but one thing I do. Here's what I want to say. If you want to be a person of purpose, if you want to be a person of direction, if you want to be a person that, that gets there, sometimes you've got to decide, this is my life, and I'm not going to go out of the box. I, I, at one time, I, I don't have this anymore, but at one time, I, I, uh, I did have, I bought the AT&T stock. I have no stocks, but one time, the, I've been in maybe once or twice, and I've lost every time. That's not a good thing for me. But I remember buying some AT&T stock and reading about it a little bit since I had a little money in there. And it says, you know, AT&T, you know, what were they? Uh, bought Southern Bell and, and they were in the, of course, the phone business, still are. But I remember uh, reading that they went into this, they bought Warner Brothers, they bought all these different things, they went all different directions. And they started to, after a while, take on all this debt. And a good company, uh, 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 their stock don't move a lot even to this day, but, but a good company. But here, here's what an, some analysis started saying. They kind of should have stayed in their core. They did better when they did what they did best. But they started getting in the entertainment business. They started to go here and buy up these companies because they needed revenue to keep flowing to pay their handsome dividend. But here's what I want to say. But now what they're doing is I heard they're uh, just this week they might have uh, had a deal with some other uh, Discovery Channel or something and, and kind of spin off their entertainment business. What they're deciding, the board of directors, they say, sit around those big tables, make that big money, is we got to get back to our core. Here's what I want to say to you. You need to be a person that, along with Paul, says, this one thing I do. Not that you can't do this, not that you can't do this. I'm not suggesting that, but you got to be a person of principle. You got to be a person ultimately that says, this is my life. I'm settling into this. Listen, it may not be perfect. I may make mistakes. There's better lives. But in order for me to go forward, this is the life that I need to lead. That, that my brothers and sisters are not optional. That, that living a, a godly life is not optional. This is the life that I lead. It may not be fancy. It may, uh, uh, there may be other people living better lives. But as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. And then you, you kind of put a target on it. You kind of know where your boundaries are. And then God has a way of helping you. Number four, once again, this is a call to clarity. This is a call as we go into the summer months to kind of get us re-grounded, re-rooted, to help us to get to the next level. There's so many options out there, and it does go along with Nick's theme about silence. It does go along with the same theme that, that Lakewood is presenting to the body of Christ this morning. So we're continuing on in that in a way to say, hey, what is trying to distract you? What's trying to lead you astray? And here, one thing I do, forgetting what is behind. Oh, let me touch really quick before we go on this. Listen, my brother, my sister, you can't always meddle in the past. What do you mean by that? You always can't be looking in, in the rear view mirror. Joel says it very well. I muddy it a little bit. But Joel says when you get in your car, when you, uh, when you go to the parking lot, you're looking at uh, the big uh, the windshield in front of you. There's a little windshield, and he says it better, but that has its purpose. But the main uh, story is in front of you. Here's what I want to say to you. You know, your life, is before you. You can't do anything about yesterday. You can't do anything about the mistakes, even, even the, the good things. Here's what I want to say. It's about your future. Paul understood that. When we're talking about having clarity, understand that your life is about going forward. But pastor, you, you, I don't have much, of, you know, there's not much before me. That's not true. So often we live in the past. I remember 
uh, leaving Hawaii. It seems like every year I try to re was trying to recreate what I had in Hawaii. We would had a great ministry in Hawaii, and uh, we're, we're thankful for it. We've been since leaving Bible college, probably seven or eight different ministries, churches that was a part of our life. But Hawaii had a special touch in our heart, of, of course, right? Uh, uh, when you're there, and I just liked it. I liked uh, the service people that were there. I got friends. I, I liked the, the weather, of course. I liked the people. It just seemed like it. Uh, they talked story. You know, Darren, Darren, you could talk to Darren an hour, and you don't even know what you talked about. Sorry, Darren, if you're listening. Uh, I, so at lunch, big lunches, but I liked it there. But we left there and, and, and came here. But it seems like I was always trying to recreate that. What are you trying to recreate that's holding you back from what God has for you today? What do you mean by that? So it was good. It was great. I don't curse. I had a lot of difficulties there, but I don't curse the past. I'm thinking about what God has for the future. But did you know that this church, and we're not a large church, but did you know that the church really didn't start to grow until I had to put some things behind me? What do you mean by that? Because I was always looking for something to be like I had it there. Here's what I want to say. You don't bring into a new relationship. You don't bring into a new job. That, you know, oh, this job was great. And your, your boss is sitting there thinking, come on. You know, or, or, you, or about what you had yesterday. We're talking about staying the course and having clarity. The fourth quick thing and. Uh, Sorry, I wasted some time in, in, in the cough and that. But he says this, I press on towards the goal. I like this. Paul understood that, um, that where his destination is. My brother, my sister, what the best thing you could do if you are going to get there is to know where you're going. What do you mean by that? Paul had a, a, had a destination. He says, I press on towards the goal to win the prize for which uh, God has called me heavenward. I found myself once again uh, making a list of projects I want to do here around the church. We started, we, I hope you look at the grass and see the hours that we put in pulling the weeds uh, and all the different things. But I made a list as I sat down, we got through with that, about 12 different things that we need to do come by August, going into the fall, before even this coming winter. Of course, we got to get a roof, and I, I laid all the different things down. Here's what I want to say. Do you know where you're heading, where you're going? Listen, Paul understood this, and he says, listen, I press on towards the goal. And he started to talk about his relationship with the Lord, but the best thing you can do is... As you go into the summer, know where God is leading you. Have a plan. You, you, this is the kind of person I like. This is the kind of person I don't like. This is the job or whatever it may be. It would be, it would be wise for you to, to look at and say, here's the things that I need to get done. By the end of the summer, I need to maybe mend some fences here. Maybe I need to get it right with this person. Maybe I need to, to explore a new job, whatever it may be for you. Paul was sent, I press on towards the goal. So he gave us some thoughts about doing due diligence in our life. Paul was just giving some thoughts from his prison cell. The people are being led astray. It's, not, it's, it's this simple. The people are being led astray by the Judaizers that were coming back in when Paul was uh, in, entrenched or uh, imprisoned. They were coming in and uh, misleading the people, trying to get them to go backwards. Paul pinned this to help them to, to clear the smoke, to understand what it's all about, and so that they wouldn't get led astray. He was concerned. He was jealous over his new converts, and he wanted them to be regrounded. He wanted them to be strong. So he, he, he shared this to help them. Listen, when the enemy comes knocking on your door this week to get you to go a new direction. Maybe you could have this list of four or five things that could help you in making your decision. 
Maybe you can have this list in front of you to help you understand where you're at today and where you need to go to. Sometimes clearing the air is the best thing you can do. Lord Jesus, we love you. Let's bow our heads. We thank you for your goodness and your faithfulness. Listen, can we all just pray this together? Can we all just maybe take a moment and reflect on this? I'm going to repeat this, but maybe you could pray along with me. Dear Jesus, I love you. I need you. I accept you into my life. Please forgive me. I thank you for a new life in Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, Father, bless your people, we pray. God, please bless your people. Help them. There's a lot of voices out there that want to lead us astray. Let's be honest. You know the devil wants to hurt your people. You know that the enemy wants to destroy them, to get them off, get them bitter towards someone fighting with something. But Lord, we're going to look at these scriptures in a, in a new way. We're going to be strong. We're going to clear the air in some things. So help us to live a good life. Help us, God, to live a life with direction. We love you. We thank you. God bless your people, we pray in Jesus' name.